Hello and welcome to this course on Isotope's superb audio restoration program, RX4. As you probably know, there are two versions of RX4. There is the standard version and the advanced version. I mention this because in this sequence of movies, we'll be looking at the new features introduced into the September 2014 update of RX2 version 4. I'm going to start here by looking at a feature that is both new and old, dependent on the edition of RX that you are running, either the standard or the advanced version. What I'm looking at is the Dialog Denoiser module, the Zero Latency Automatic Denoiser. Now, as I've alluded to, the Dialog Denoiser was a feature of RX3 Advanced, but not RX3 Standard. With the release of RX4, the Dialog Denoiser is now present in both Advanced and Standard versions. Therefore, I thought it suitable here to introduce this sequence of RX4 movies looking at the Dialog Denoiser so that those RX3 standard users amongst you get to see what that particular module can do for you. Now, I know it's named Dialog Denoiser, suggesting it's only useful for the spoken word, but in reality, it can be used very effectively with musical content too, when the manual mode is employed. That all said, I will start here by looking at it used with a spoken word recording. Now this module has been designed to produce good results quickly and has two distinct options, auto and manual. The auto mode will react quickly to any shifts in background noise whilst keeping the narration in this audio file intact. So, let me first explain what we've got here whilst looking at the RX4 user interface. In fact, this is the RX4 advanced user interface and one of the latter beta builds, so do bear that in mind if it has been cosmetically modified by the time of its official release. Now, I've got two audio tracks open. They are essentially two separate recordings of the same thing. In fact, they are the opening couple of paragraphs from a novel that I'm converting into an audiobook. I've got two separate recordings here because this first version has been recorded in my studio and has been gently treated to compression and de-essing, etc., etc. By contrast, this second instance is a direct recording into an iPhone with no processing having occurred. And to purposely set ourselves with a challenge, I've recorded it in my conservatory with all its harsh reverberant qualities. So my challenge here is to use the RX4 Dialog Denoiser to reduce as much unwanted background noise as possible. Now, so that we get an idea of what we're aiming at, I'll play you the start of the studio recording. Here we go. After a six hour drive through the night, Paul Stockton climbed out of a black Range Rover he couldn't ordinarily afford to hire. Hidden under the passenger seat was more than £84,000, a rolled up bundle of papers and an unloaded gun. OK, so that's part of the optimised studio recording. Right, I don't need it now, so I'll remove it from our session here. We can now focus on this much worse recording created with the built-in microphone on my iPhone. Let's have a listen. Understandably, there is quite a bit of noise present throughout, and we can visually see that there. So, let's have a listen. After a six hour drive through the night, Paul Stockton climbed out of a black Range Rover he couldn't ordinarily afford to hire. Hidden under the passenger seat was more than £84,000, a rolled up bundle of papers and an unloaded gun. On the back seat, purposely in view, was a brand new wetsuit. His portly stomach had little chance of fitting. It didn't matter. It was only for show. OK, as you heard, an expected rough recording, full of hiss, background noise, clicks and full of reverb from the conservatory. Anyway, I'll start off by looking at all these noisy areas here. Now luckily with this recording, there are quite a number of areas that feature the background noise in isolation, so it's easy enough to grab a noise footprint. However, before I do any of that, I'm going to open up the D-click module, seeing as this is quite a clicky recording. Inevitable, I suppose, with the quality of the microphone embedded into the iPhone. Now, generally, I'm going to leave everything set to the defaults. However, I do want to change the algorithm. 
I'll flick the algorithm over to multiband random clicks and simply hit process so that I can remove as many of these extra loud clicks as possible. As I say, inevitable really with the sensitivity of the embedded microphone. OK, and once done, I've removed just over 2,000 clicks. Right, let's deal with the noise now, the focus of this tutorial. I'm just going to zoom into this area here. I'm going to use this area as my noise profile footprint. So with it selected, I can now open up my denoise module. I am going to be using the dialog denoiser predominantly. However, I do like to look at the spectral denoiser module too, simply because it gives me an idea of what the background noise is like once I select learn. OK, so that gives me a visual look at what the profile is like. Now I'm just going to flick over to dialog so that now we can operate the dialog denoiser. And as I mentioned earlier, we have these two options, auto and manual. Now if I leave it set to manual, then like the spectral module that we've just looked at, we will have to learn or train RX4 what this noise is like. And as we would expect, we get the noise profile just from this selection. We're not restricted to just one area, by the way. Later on, I'll show you how we can do this with multiple areas. So we've learned selected because generally this background noise is broadband noise that's consistent right throughout the audio track, then this is a good place to start. Anyway, before I commit, I'll just take the playhead to the beginning and we're going to preview this so that we can hear the effect this has across the entire audio. So let's have a listen. Here we go. After a six hour drive through the night, Paul Stockton climbed out of a black Range Rover he couldn't ordinarily afford to hire. OK, now I'm sure you'll agree that was an improvement. And that was with the default setting of 12 decibels of reduction. By the way, you can't have failed to have noticed that we've got these six nodes running across here. You can adjust these if you prefer, and each node relates to a specific frequency band. So you can see that you can tailor or modify individual frequency bands if you think your audio will benefit from this. Modifying any of these nodes means you can adjust the noise threshold for a particular band. It might well be that you want to control the lower end of your recording, maybe because there's quite a bit of rumble. Well, now you can, as you can see, adjust any of these bands to suit. Now, to be honest, because it does such a good job anyway, I tend to leave it set to whatever the Learn Profile suggests. But of course, that's up to you. It's better to have the option than not. Furthermore, we have these two sliders to the right, Threshold and Reduction. The Threshold set to zero by default. Of course, you can adjust up or down so that you can offset the noise threshold curve if required. And then to the right, the Reduction slider, well, this allows you to adjust the strength of the reduction more or less as you choose. This is graded in decibels for convenience. Right, that's the manual option, but if you want RX4 to take care of your noise reduction automatically, well, as you would expect, I'm sure, simply click on the auto button. And then like we did a moment ago, simply click on the preview button to check this out. Let's have a listen. After a six hour drive through the night, Paul Stockton climbed out of a black Range Rover he couldn't ordinarily afford to hire. OK, so that time you saw the noise profile adjust, and this was done automatically, as expected, and not only automatically adjust, but this was dynamic. As the background noise fluctuated in level, then this auto setting allowed the threshold area to dynamically adjust too. It wasn't fixed as the content was played through. And to my ears, this sounds possibly the more natural setting. I suppose because it is dynamic, fluctuating and undulating in sympathy with the material. As I say, more natural to my ears, certainly with the spoken word. Now so far, all I've done is preview this using the manual setting and the auto setting. I've not committed yet any of that noise reduction to this file. So once you are happy with the results, whether it's the auto method or the manual method, then of course you would just simply click on process. Now I'm going to draw this tutorial to a close now that we've looked at the dialog component of the denoiser module. I'll play around with it a little bit more off screen, simply to save your time. I'm sure you don't really want to watch me for the next five or 10 minutes adjusting and playing around with all these different settings to try and achieve the best results with this audio file. 
So I'll leave it here then, and I'll see you in a moment.